Uh, he may be laughing about cannabis, but the fight over pot's a very serious one. Should it be legal? Should it be a crime? Joining me now is Montel Williams, who uses medical marijuana every day to treat intractable pain caused by multiple cirrhosis. Also, CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta, who changed his mind on marijuana and tells us why in his documentary, Weed. Gentlemen, let me come to, to both of you again. I want to start really with Montel. Uh, I've talked to you before about this and about your daily use of marijuana. I believe you've taken some today as you would every day. Is that correct? Well, you know, here's something that's very been happening. We haven't had a chance to talk for quite a while. I've been involved in a program that's a very unique program. It's a deep brain stimulation program that's been helping me as much. So I don't have to use as much as I have in the past. But when I try to use it like I would use if I was using Vicodin or any other medication, when I'm really in bad pain, most of the time before I go to sleep at night, that's when I have the toughest time because I have night cr cramps and tremors. And those tremors then cause that pain that stays there at about 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning. So I normally use an evening. And so part of the reason why I reached out to you, uh, Pierce, last week while I was in Chile, the second I saw Sanjay promoting his Sunday special, and just the fact that he said, you know what, I stopped and looked at the research, did what a doctor is supposed to do, looked at the research, and now I'm ready to at least look at this under a different light. His mind isn't completely changed, but I think his mind is in the direction that let's just support the research that's there that says that this is an efficacy agent and doctors should be the ones that should be able to prescribe it. Well said. And for somebody like you, uh, Montel, who has suffered in pain for years and years and years and has constantly uh, put out there uh, a belief that you do think marijuana could be used in a medical way to help people in your position, you must feel pretty not only vindicated by this debate going the way it's going, but also pretty grateful to Sanjay, who's a very eminent doctor, making such a public U-turn on it. I, you know, to say thankful, I don't know what, I'd, I'd hug this guy and kiss this guy because what we've been waiting for <laughs> in this entire movement. And I'm not talking about the movement to legalize, because that's not what I'm involved in at all. I'm talking about the fact that I have a relationship with a doctor who can right now prescribe me any myriad of psychotropic medication to help affect my pain. Everything from the most extremes to the others. And I'm not gonna name any, because I don't wanna put any other drugs down. They don't work for me anymore. I've outused my opiate lifestyle. I can't do it anymore, and the opiates don't work for me. And so this is a drug that works, and if my doctor, if Sanjay was my doctor, and he said, I think I should prescribe this little tablet for you to eat, or this for you to smoke each night, Montel, I prefer you didn't smoke, but I want you to do this because I think it's going to work for you, and that'll help you work and be a, a contributing member to society, that's the kind of doctor I want, and that's the relationship I think I should have with my doctor, and the fact that he is such a preeminent doctor, and recognize that way, not just in the United States, but worldwide. I want more doctors to recognize his statement. Do the research. That's all we ask. Yeah, yeah. good point. Now, Sanjay, you, you've uh, you got enormous ratings for this special on Sunday. Some of the biggest ratings CNN's had outside of breaking news in a very long time, showing that there's vast interest mm. in this subject. America is moving slowly but inexorably, many believe, towards at least bringing in uh, medical use of cannabis uh, in a legalized way and possibly even recreationally. You've been keen, I think, to stress the medical benefits, not straying too far into recreational, similar position to Montel. Mm. But you've also flat, uh, attracted lots of flack this week from some doctors who say this is dangerous and it shouldn't be happening. I've got one of those doctors coming up after the break, but what is your response to the criticism you've had this week? Well, you look, I mean, a lot of the criticism, I think, you know, first of all, you, you talk to a guy like Montel, and he's been ahead of the curve on this, frankly. I've been talking about this for years because he's, he's lived this. And, and, and I wish, you know, more people, myself included, would have paid attention to the chorus of legitimate patients with legitimate problems who got legitimate benefit from this. But having said that, I think the, the, the criticism often stems from this, this dichotomy that, look, if you do this, what about the kids? And I get it. I have kids. I, I, that, I, I understand that concern and all that, but I, I don't think either Montel or I are saying that this is something that we would start advocating for kids to start taking. Look, if, if, if the trade-off is because of the concern about kids that patients will then be denied therapy that works for them, like Montel Williams and like hundreds and thousands of other patients out there, that is not something that I think you know, uh, doctors or, frankly, any compassionate person should accept. And Pierce, I got to tell you, before we go to break, honestly, for the last 37 years in the United States of America, our federal government already figured out how to do it. Every single month, 
they send one of these out to now four patients who are alive. It started out with almost 30 patients, 22 patients, and now only four of them are alive. They get 500 marijuana cigarettes rolled by the federal government, grown at the University of Mississippi, and then sent out to dispensaries every month. This isn't that hard. All we have to do is have the President of the United States change it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2, bring it under the controls that we already have, and therefore, pharmacies could s dispense it. They already have safes. We already have the system in place. And if our government has been testing it, growing it, and selling it for 37 years, how long is it going to take them to figure it out? <laughs> there, there is a hypocrisy well, here, like Piers. It, you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you know, that is a, an example of hypocrisy. The United States government also owns a, a, a patent on marijuana as a medical application. Montel has it here. So we have a patent uh, through our Department of Health and Human Services on marijuana as a therapeutic, and we also schedule it as a Schedule One, saying it has no medical okay. application. Well, look. We are going to go to that break, I promise now. We're going to come back with Dr. Sharon Levy. She's the director of Adolescent Substance Abuse Program and also the chair of the American Academy of Pediatrics. So she has a different view to the pair of you, and I'm sure it'll be a pretty forthright discussion coming after the break. So is pot harmless or a gateway drug? And do the benefits of medical marijuana outweigh the risks? Back with me now, Montel Williams. He uses medical marijuana every day. Also Sanjay uh, Gupta, obviously CNN's top doctor. And Dr. Sharon Levy joins me, the director of the Adolescent Substance Abuse Program at Boston's Children's Hospital. Uh, Dr. Levy, you've heard what Sanjay's had to say. You've heard Montel, who actively uses marijuana to deal with his pain very successfully. Why are you so opposed to this? Right. Well, uh, while I oppose medical marijuana, I want to really start by saying that there's a lot that I do agree with, with both Sanjay and Montel. Uh, so it's uh, pretty clear that there are a lot of uh, potential therapeutic effects of cannabinoids uh, that are helping Montel with his pain. Um, there's cannabidiol that's uh, helping uh, the little girl who uh, we saw in, in Sanjay's documentary. And, I, you know, as a physician, I think it's really important that we develop these as medications. And I'm not here to try and uh, block uh, patients who really need this, uh, really need cannabinoid therapy from getting it. Uh, the issue is, though, that uh, it's, I, I would say as a medication, it's not really quite ready for prime time. There's a lot. We just don't know about it. We don't have a good idea about how to do dosing. We don't know about the pharmacokinetics of the substance. And we don't know about the, the uh, as, as much as we need to know about the potential harms, especially for adolescents. The issue really is that for uh, every patient who would benefit from medical marijuana, there are probably several others who could be harmed by marijuana by using it for a condition that's really not going to help it. Well, but I mean, isn't it slightly absurd that the U.S. government still classifies marijuana in the same category as LSD and heroin, uh, which are defined, I'm quoting here, drugs with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse? Quite clearly, even you agree with Sanjay and Montel that there is clear evidence that it does bring uh, therapeutic help and medical help uh, where appropriate. So the classification seems to be completely wrong, doesn't it? Well, you know, I think that there has been uh, difficulty in studying cannabinoids largely because of a confluence of circumstances uh, uh, that, uh, that were brought up in the special and in other interviews that we've seen on CNN. Um, and uh, we know that there are more agencies uh, regulating uh, uh, cannabinoids than other substances that we develop as medications and you know that may need to be addressed and I think as physicians we should be advocating for um, uh, uh, fixing the regulatory problem so that we can study this the proper way and we can use it as medications I worry though that uh, medical marijuana is really a workaround and whenever you do a workaround um, you can make mistakes and and that's why those regulatory processes are there in the first place um, and so I, I, I think we need to fix them uh, but I don't think that we should be going around them. Let's play again uh, from Sanjay's riveting documentary, Weed. This is a, a girl called Charlotte. She was five years old and was suffering 300 epileptic-style seizures a week. 
She's now down to one a week, thanks to a special formula of marijuana that didn't get her high. Let's watch this clip. It was his five-year-old daughter, Charlotte, seizing. Diagnosed with a severe form of epilepsy, she was having 300 seizures a week, each attack so severe it had the potential to kill her. They had already tried dozens of high-powered drugs. We needed to try something else, and at that point in time, marijuana was that natural course of action to try. Holding Charlotte in her arms, Paige waited. An hour ticked by, and then another, and then another. She didn't have a seizure that day. And then she didn't have a seizure that night. Did you sit there and sit yeah. there, look at your watch? And... Right, I thought, this is crazy. And yeah. then she didn't have one the next day. And then the next day. And I thought, that is, yeah. she would have had 100 by now. And I just, I know, I just thought, this is insane. Yeah, I still get goosebumps when I watch that. But, you know, I have to say, you know, I agree with Dr. Levy. Uh, you know, we need to appro approach this cautiously and responsibly. But just to give you a little context with Charlotte again, who is emblematic of many more patients, she was on several different anti-seizure medications. She was on medications that uh, were, could potentially be toxic. They wanted to compound a veterinary pill, Dr. Levy, mm -hmm. for her. And when, some, when they suggested marijuana, everyone thought, well, hang on a second, that, that's crazy. Marijuana, come on now. And, and you look at her. She's on a medication now that uh, for her is clearly working, working better than everything else that was out there, and for her, far less toxic. So again, I, and I don't want you to think this is an anecdotal story. She is emblematic of so many more patients. And I like right, and here's the, the thing, here's the thing, Montel. I want, to, I want to bring Montel in here because, Montel, you yourself have had trouble at airports, you know, being stopped with, with marijuana pipes and so on. The, the, to me, the completely incongruous part of Charlotte's story is that we're all stunned by it. We're all in awe over what has happened in, in solving her terrible, terrible affliction with medical marijuana. And yet if she steps foot out of Colorado where it's legal, she could end up breaking the law in other states for something that has clearly almost certainly saved her life. Dr. Levy, I, 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 let me come to you first, then Montel. That can't be right, can it? Right. Well, I, again, you know, I, I, my point of view isn't that we should be trying to keep cannabinoids away from children like Charlotte. Uh, you know, clearly it's helped her uh, it, it, tremendously. Uh, you know, I, and the best way to deliver cannabinoids right now may very well be these extracts of marijuana. Um, you, you know, I hope that in the future that we're able to do a little better, that we're able to develop these substances as a medication just like an, every other. Um, and, uh, you know, I certainly don't imagine ever uh, recommending that any patient smoke a medication. I'm, there, there's been some uh, uh, allusion to that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think all of these steps are, are very, very important. Now, for a child like Charlotte, that may mean that uh, we need to have some mechanism for compassionate use because clearly she can't wait. Um, but, uh, uh, okay. but I do think uh, okay. that... Yeah, let, let me just go to, go to Montel on this uh, for a final word from you, Montel, because you're a classic example of somebody whose life has been immeasurably improved by medical marijuana. Where do you think this is all going to go? I, I think that now that we have more doctors, and even Dr. Levy agrees, we need to do the research. This is what we're all saying. Unfortunately, for the last 38 years, our federal government has wasted money researching something and dispensing it, claiming that it was efficacy. So if what they've already made and delivered is efficacy, then send me this. Why not expand the program and allow me to have what our government grows that they now over 38 years says is efficacy and should work. And just like the people who receive this canister, they can travel from state to state to state with this canister. So I'm just going to say that, you know, I, I spent 22 years in the military supporting and defending this Constitution of the United States in a uniform. I should have the same rights that our government affords for other people. They give this to them to solve their pain problems. I'm in pain. Yeah. Give it to me. And then I don't have to worry about going through airports because this is a pass from the federal government to take it with me. Right. Well, I'm totally with you. I'm totally with Sanjay. But I understand the concerns of Dr. Levy, too. I and too. I thank you all, all for joining me. And good to see you, Montel, as well. I keep, every time you come on my show, I keep thinking, why is that guy not back doing his own show on television? I'm sure it won't be <laughs> long. Stay tuned. Uh, I'm coming discuss back, that, Pierce. Discuss that at another time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Sanjay's special, Weed, is re-airing on CNN uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern on Friday. That follows my own one-hour special on pot, which is equally fascinating. It's a riveting subject, which all Americans are currently debating. I urge you to watch what effectively is pot night on CNN on Friday night. Coming up next, Michael Jackson's ex-wife.